tumia bima pap kwa kupiga nyota 150 nyota 51 alama ya reli au kwa WhatsApp namba 0764166066 na ujipatie bima ya dereva kipato bima pap urahisi wa maisha Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Citizen Exclusive with your host Mpoki Thompson. Today's episode we are going to the Great Lakes. We are here in Dar es Salaam with the leader of Burundi's main opposition party, Honorable Agathon Rasa. He's currently in Tanzania and we'll discuss everything politics, everything peace. And Mr. Rasa, welcome to the Citizen. First and foremost, um you're in Tanzania. Yes. Can you give us a brief about what has brought you to this nation? Yeah, you know Tanzania may be my second home somehow. Because uh, from 1988 to 1991 I lived in Tanzania, especially in the Kigwa settlement as an asylum seeker. Unfortunately, I did it got it. <laughs> and uh, the situation within Burundi was uh, worsening year after year and uh, and as everybody knows from 1993 the the situation was that Burundians were obliged to fight each other i may say it was uh, uh, some kind of madness because if burundians could manage to discuss their problems we could have avoided that bloodshed mm -hmm. unfortunately people who are in to power have been always thinking that they are very powerful and that they can crush whoever may claim for his rights this was the situation that time this is seem to be the same situation today and yet i think we africans we better sit down and try to think twice about our destiny as a continent as nations as people so that we could not just put our main focus on sectarianism in terms of managing the so our societies but try to think what could be the best way to make our continent our countries develop really we have got resources you know a lot of them but we are not benefiting from them it's not enough yeah and uh, for for burundi for instance imagine a country where the leaders can manage to annihilate elite people just for some fish selfishness of those who are reading okay. yeah so if you ask me why am i here in tanzania yes because i understand you have <laughs> met with some opposition uh, leaders for example the alliance for change the act was a lendo yeah. but on a broader picture what do you seek from tanzania as you mentioned yourself this is not the first time you yeah. sought asylum here in the past yeah. the governments of tanzania from Nyerere today have been friendly with the governments of Burundi and governments of Burundi has been suppressing the people of Burundi so my request or my recommendation would be that the government of Tanzania yes. make a, lift, a little shift in his relationship with Burundi let the government of Tanzania be friend of the people of Burundi okay. more than being friend of the government of Burundi because in that way yes. the government of Tanzania would have a main preoccupation with regard to what would be going on in Burundi and prevent the situation to worsen 
Okay. Now you yeah. talked ab about um, the possibility, for example, what's happening in Tanzania, mm -hmm. in Zanzibar. We have, you know, government of national um, unity, where yes. there is a bit of an alliance between the opposition and the ruling party. Yeah. Is that perhaps uh, a solution that you think might help address some of the political challenges that Burundi is facing? Ah, uh, indeed. Okay. You know, first of all, Burundi is not a state which which is born today. It, it has got a history, and throughout that history, we may see that there has always been a kind of exclusion in terms of appointing officers here and there. And you know, when you make exclusion, you cannot deliver properly. If you have to rely on exclusion in managing a society or a country, forget about accountability, forget about good governance. And the lack of these two elements may lead one day to chaos. And we don't wish our country to sink anew in the chaos. Yes. You know, in Arusha, the spirit was that with regard to what happened before, where exclusion and discrimination led to bloodshed yes. and to many thousand people who fled the country. Yes. And that there was no signs of cooperation. Mm -hmm. And we, we saw that that country was going to be torn apart totally. And if the international community and the regional initiative got involved to solve that issue and could say, it's okay. Now what is needed to be done is to see Burundians sharing the power. Okay. But do you think then Burundians, yes. Burundians doesn't mean Hutu and Tusi. Of course it goes beyond that. No. Burundians means Burundians. You can, you can discriminate one another f on another basis. Today, for instance, we are excluded just because of being... But is that blend something that you personally, um, due to your political ambition, wish to see come to pass? Or is it something that the Burundians themselves want? You know, I personally don't have these kind of silly ambitions. Okay. No. If I embraced the political struggle, I was genuine. Okay. I hate injustice. And I don't like people who rely on injustice in dealing with the society. Okay. So for me, and for many Burundians, I think with regard to what happened in the history of Burundi, yes. the better way to get out of this cycle of uh, instability and violence is, is to make everyone participate. Monolithism in, uh, in setting up institution doesn't help Burundi, after all. All what it can bring is just to see there would be more and more mismanagement. You will be facing people who are incompetent in offices. You will have to deal with people who are only busy rooting just because for them there is no vision. So, Honorable yeah. Rasa, um, if we are to go back a little bit um, in history now yeah. to put some perspective into your political journey and mm -hmm. ambitions, mm -hmm. you once led the National Liberation Forces, yeah. but you were ousted in the year 2010 when you were in the Reslam during the political change in Burundi. But yeah. you managed to go back, mm -hmm. you became the leader of the independent coalitions and mm -hmm. actually led them to become the second biggest uh, political force in the country. Yeah. What has driven your political ambition all these years up until today? You continue to struggle for Burundi. I have already said that personally I, 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 I engaged myself within, not for selfish ambitions, okay. but because I hate injustice. Okay. 
I may tell you that I, it was in 1969. I was about five years. I was uh, approaching six years. I was in first standard at that time. I just remember what a scene which could just ignite some kind of revolt within, within myself. We were in a compound of uh, an older woman who was a friend to my family. Our parents and our elders were down in the valley doing some, some agriculture, agricultural works there. And we were in that compound just waiting for them to finish their work and then to go back home together. In Burundi, there is a community which has been living on just uh, making some pot in clay, in, with clay as a raw material. And they were exchanging these pots with food, yes, something like that. Yeah. That day, I remember it was a Saturday. We were there. That community was selling their pots. And that, 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 that uh, old, old, old women or woman was just giving us something to eat. And the, the kids of those people who were selling pots were not willing to share food with us. I could ask them, why aren't you eating with us? They responded that they have been forbidden to do so. Uh, they could say, uh, they have forbid us to share with umunu in Kirundi means a person. Okay. Yeah, as in Swahili we say mtu, okay. yeah, a person. Yeah. So I, w I wondered, aren't you person like us? Right, yes. So this could just click in my in my mind, in my mind, uh, what is going on? How come that a kid is hungry and you, you forbid him to share food with others? Is this uh, something which has a sense? Absolutely not. Yeah. After that, I saw what kind of injustice the administration was was trying to, to implement toward the population. Okay. There was also massacres yeah. in 1972. So it was yeah. perhaps all reason tribal related? Yeah, mainly that time it was tribally related. And the rulers could say there is no problem, no ethnicity whatsoever. And indeed, if you consider it on the basis of sociology, for instance, you won't have boundaries between Hutu and Tutsi and Twa. We live the same villages. We have the same culture, the same language, the same beliefs, uh, the same customs. So uh, scientifically speaking, this issue of ethnicity is a false issue. Okay. Uh, and that's why discrimination on that basis and even discrimination on the basis of political belonging is a nonsense. And with regard to all these troubles we have been crossing during this history of ours, it would be better that people who are ruling today and tomorrow, and I don't know when, try to be people with broader mind who can think and feel that it is imperative to associate everybody so that you prevent any other 
useless crisis. Okay, well, now was yeah. that perhaps the foundation of, because you were part of the civil war, uh, yeah. the Hutus against the Tutsis um, yeah. over the years. Now we understand that many people lost their lives, yeah. but at the end of the day, there was a specific goal, a struggle that you were trying to strive at. Was perhaps this iniquity that you were seeing within the society, the driving force that made you join, you yeah. know, some of the Hutus to liberate, um, in a sense, in Burundi? Yes, okay. because we believed that all Burundians deserve the same rights. Okay. And the government must be responsible and accountable for each and every one. So equity or justice may be the basis of everything. You have no justice, you have no equity, forget about peace, forget about stability. And you cannot go on pretending that you are at peace, you are stable, when people are disappearing mysteriously, for instance, and you don't address these issues. People are kidnapped, you are ruling, and you do nothing to make this stop. Uh, at your official speech, you say everything is all right. We are improving. Improving when people are groaning, uh, seriously speaking, uh, that improvement is just an illusion. Okay, so we understand that some of uh, the government officials, some of the leaders, are people who were part of the struggle, who were the part of the civil war, mm -hmm. and as yourself, they were both on the Hutu side. Yeah. What has remained the major point of contention between you, the party that you lead, and the current regime? Considering that history has it that you both fought the same civil war, mm -hmm. what is the big divide currently? I think the, the divide currently is on how the country is managed. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there is a place called Nupanda, there in Burundi. These guys who are into power today buried their fellow there. And they put scriptures there where you can read, it isn't a regime. No, it isn't a tribe or an ethnic group that kills, but the bad, a bad government is the one who kills. Okay. I'm not going to sink into tolls of deaths since the death that they went in office, but I can tell you what we can witness for this period is worse than what we witnessed before. Mm -hmm. Of course, there happen to be massacres, huge massacres in some years. Mm. But you could spend five years, 10 years, there is nobody who has disappeared. You have never seen a corpse of somebody who has been assassinated. And today it is like life is nothing. People can be killed and those perpetrators are not, not dealt with properly by the police and justice. And you know, one among the key responsibilities of a government is to protect the citizens. Yes, and the first right each and every one has got is the right to live. So if you cannot be preoccupied of the lives of your citizens, then when will you pretend that justice is ruling in your country? Now, human rights um, uh, bodies, for example, even in Burundi, mm -hmm. have um, uh, said that there seems to be an injustice that is being done against the opposition in general, but mostly 
the party that you're leading, the National um, Freedom Council, yeah. have there been any specific evidence as mm -hmm. to the assertion or as to the accusation against the current regime that there are people who have disappeared, that there are people who are being tortured, that there mm -hmm. are people who are being murdered from your party? And if so, mm -hmm. what has been the response of the government? It has been so. The response of the government is always to pretend that this is nonsense, that everything is okay. But how come that everything is okay and you don't allow human rights committee of the UN to come in and to investigate? How come that you say that everything is all right? And when comes the time for you to discuss about the human rights in your country, the delegation of Burundi may not accept to sit with other Burundians just because they are refugees or because perhaps they have got some troubles with the regime. Yeah, I, I'm sure that if everything was all right, we will be brokering day and night for people to come and witness what progress we have achieved. Okay. But if we are reluctant to see people coming in order to investigate or in order to, to witness what is going on, then be sure that situation is not what it is painted Indeed. yeah beside this currently our political party the CNL is under some big threat yeah the Minister of Home Affairs just relying on on some claims false claims from a ten group of ten people decide to suspend all the activities of the party. Yes. We cannot meet in our office. We cannot organize rallies. We have not infringed a single article of the law of Burundi. Okay. If we were infringing the law, even that time, it isn't the minister who could take that sanction. This could become from the Supreme Court, Supreme Court yes. and we have no, call, no, 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 no case in any court. So the arbitrary is going on, and we can still beat the drum and say mm. uh, we have a democracy, but indeed, democracy must not be just simple words we speak. Democracy would be just behaviors, would be deeds where rights of each other are respected, are promoted, and where those who are into power are not fearing for, for losing the power one day, okay. and then try to suppress the opposition. Yeah. I think the problem is there. The problem is there. Now, yeah. more, more, more to that, um, because the CNL came um, into existence as to the Constitution, because yeah. you, you had to conform to what the Constitution demanded. Yeah. Instead of having independent coalitions, then you had to form an official political party. Yeah. But then, as you mentioned, the operations have been suspended, yeah. due in part to mm -hmm. internal conflict, according mm -hmm. to the officials. That's what they're saying. That due to some internal irregularities, that is mm. the term that has been used, yeah. then there are also worries that perhaps this suspension could risk further deteriorating the status of Burundi in its political realm. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Do you think mm -hmm. that the current suspension that mm -hmm. has been imposed against mm -hmm. your party mm -hmm. threatens the peace struggle in Burundi? Somehow, yes. Somehow, yes, because, you know, if you refrain people from enjoying their rights at the end of the day, the 
there can happen something worse. First of all, if they could be just refraining us from exercising our rights, but they go beyond this. Now, for instance, a friend of ours has been put to a maximum prison. He doesn't have the right to be visited. He is not presented to the court. And nobody knows why he is imprisoned. He is not a criminal. He has then done nothing wrong. But he is into jail. Yeah. Because they don't want CNL to be there. Okay. Yeah. But um, perhaps do you think that the uh, internal conflict, which of course you are disputing, mm -hmm. um, it is said that there are certain members within the CNL that are against your leadership. Yeah. Is there anything that is being done to address these dissenting voices within CNL, if at all they exist? Yeah, we did. Okay. We did. We had to meet on the 17th and uh, 18th of February with those guys. And we conclude that they have to stop what they were trying to, the way they were trying to behave and work hand in hand with them. We go together to the rallies and so forth. We organize a national conference of our party on the 12th of March. They attended. They contributed. We could go, we, we made a tour of the new provinces. There are five according to the law which have been promulgated on the 16th of March, which must lead us to change some disposition of our, our, our rules so as to be updated somehow. And the fact that those guys didn't find themselves in the same position they have been occupying and which they used in complicity with CND Def to, 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 to try to sabotage the activities of the party, now they claim that it was a nonsense. And the minister can just say, yes, there is no convention, there is no whatsoever. So just imagine, the minister gave us green light to organize that and to, to hold that convention on the 12th of March. He could allow us to tour the country in terms of brokering this, the results of that convention and also to sensitize the, 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 the people about this new law which reduced the provinces from 18 to 5 and communes from 119 to 42 and so forth. Then all of a sudden he just changed his mind in support of those guys just because he's from CNDF the day and CNDF the day want to be alone comes the election of 2025 so that it can be guaranteed. To, be, to, to remain in office forever. But I may challenge whoever is thinking that he can be a tenor or that his system can be a tenor. Hegemony, if they, they, they have been at school, they know what is the fate of any kind of hegemonism. Yeah. Now, so speaking of um, uh, the, the, the elections, let's get into that a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. In 2020, you contested, yeah. but then um, the current regime under President Daishimiye won the elections, which you disputed as to the validity, as to the fairness. Mm -hmm. Now that you're headed towards uh, 2025, mm -hmm. what do you think needs to be implemented by the current regime? by your party and also the international body to ensure that Burundi has fair and equitable ballots 
come the next elections, even though right now there are claims that your party is being put on the sidelines in order to ensure that there is a smooth win for the ruling party. Yeah. What is your uh, stay on that? First of all, they have to give up their plans of dividing CNL and try to, to, to help political parties to strengthen themselves so that we can have an election where people can compete on basis of programs, political programs, pragmatic social project or portfolio that, that uh, they can really manifesto that they can sell to the people. Secondly, they must avoid their habitual way of doing things in appointing, appointing commissioners to the National Electoral Board. They must consider that this board is a board of all Burundians, not a board of a political party. Thirdly, we have as Burundians to sit together to analyze the, the, the electoral code to see what is causing problems and try to 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 to, 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 to what can I say try to to, to 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 organize together the elections starting by by by, by cleaning the law which may be implemented through that process because a biased law is the first source of electoral conflict. And there is uh, something which has been happening uh, that uh, make us wonder. How come Burundi is reluctant to host observers from outside these boundaries. But would run everywhere there is an election to observe. To observe, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you think that maybe there is a, there's a hidden agenda somewhere? There is a hidden agenda, yes. Okay. And you know, Burundi is part of the international community. Indeed. It's a member of UN organization. Yes. It is member member of AU. It is member of EAC and other sub-regional organizations. Okay, now speaking about the EAC in a minute, um, I, I, I want you to uh, give us your views on the role that the East African community heads of state can play in addressing some of the challenges that Burundi is facing because we understand that Tanzania through its leaders has been part and parcel of the struggle. There have been dialogues that have been held. Yes. But now looking at the broader um, East African community bloc, as you're saying, Burundi is a member. What do you think can be done by the heads of state in this situation? Yes, the, the, the East African community has got to play a role of improving democracy within this community. So for instance, today, heads of state of this community would better pressurize on their fellow in Burundi in order to lead him in terms of trying to alleviate this situation in which they are trying to push CNL. You know, this is just another episode of trying to provide the opposition. Okay. In 2009, that government could set up another group against me and the party, and even could bar the road for us to any initiative to organize even our national congress that time. But due to the pressure of the summit in November that year, we could hold our national conference that time. 
I think even today, these leaders need to do such a thing. You know, that time, the ambassador who was in the office, the Tanzania ambassador, mm -hmm. Ambassador Mdolwa Francis, yes. could publicly say on the radio in the media in Pujumbura that we have come from afar mm -hmm. to reach this point where all these guys who were fighting laid down their weapons. We cannot allow that the attitude of one or another make people think anew to say his weapon. This must stop. Must stop. So we need people who can speak such kind of language. People who can say to the government of Burundi that Burundi is not the property of CNDF today. Okay. That Burundi is for all Burundians. And that Burundi is under a multi party system, then let all these organiza political organizations enjoy their freedom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. By now, the way, the constitution of Burundi mm. guarantees yes. the freedom of association. Yes. So, how come that one can get worried? that I belong to a political party, that I don't want to go to his. Okay. Now, Mr. Mr. Rasa, um, I want uh, to take you back a little bit in history. Now, as you're striving for um, the political struggle of Burundi yeah. under the current uh, CNL party, mm -hmm. you once led the FNL. Yes. And uh, during your leadership, it has been put on record that mm -hmm. there are accusations mm -hmm. that they were child soldiers that were used, and other atrocities. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to put it on record. I want you to address these accusations. Mm -hmm. Is there any veracity as to those claims? Because other than using child sh soldiers, mm -hmm. it is believed that they were also looting, rape, and even murder. Mm -hmm. Since you were the leader of the FNL back then, what do you have to say about that? I think FNL is different in his behaving is different from other rebel groups here and there. And that's why even the people of Bujumbura Rural, for instance, appreciate CNL and even today are supportive to CNL. Yeah. Because we treated them fairly we protected them. We prevent their women and the daughters to be raped, which before we get that in that place was common. And who was the okay. combatant of Sendedef and the National Army that time? With this issue of uh, child soldiers, you know, the problem is that that crisis could uh, leave that country desolate. There are some other children who lost all their parents. We have not been recruiting them. And even we managed to, to help those who could agree to be helped to go to school from primary and we accompanied them till completing the university studies. So it wasn't our program, neither our aim to use children in that struggle. If it could have been happening, maybe it is by accident. Personally, I have been struggling against this as I struggled against arming civilians. So uh, many, many as, lies there. As, as, as the leader of uh, the main, main opposition, we're almost wrapping up, as the leader of the main opposition, yeah. what is your hope for peaceful coexistence in Burundi? My hope is that change is uh, mandatory, somehow. But, you know, 
there's always resistance to change, mainly for those who are into power. But it is a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Yeah. yeah. When the due time comes, yes. change happens. It occurs. Okay. So I'm convinced that the good change for all citizens of Burundi, politician and non-politician, is ahead of us. Yes, well, on that note, Mr. Rasa, we'll call it a day. It has been nice talking to you. Yeah. For the Citizen Exclusive, you were with me, your host, Mpoke Thompson. Until next time, bye-bye. Kabla tulianza safari, wengi tukikumbuka. Kutakisha patairi, upepo, ufofes. Kutakisha spana na jek, zipo na zinafanya kai. Kutakisha breki zinakamata. Taza mbele, nyuma, indicator, hazardi, zinawaka. Hapo sawa. Waifa, zinafanya kazi. Kutangaia oili, injini, na maji. Sanunua bima, na bima papu. Ili zisome, na kusomeka. Kisha, gahari na oshua. Yote hayo ni utayari wa chombo chako na changamoto za safari. Ila, so kwa jini yako wewe deleva. Ye, yeah, deleva. Umechukua hatuwa gani? Kulinda wakika wa kuendelea kujipatia hela. Si unajula? Ya babalani ya tabiriki. Tumia bima pap kwa kupiga nyota moja tano sifuri. Nyota tano moja alama ya reli. Au kwa WhatsApp namba. Sifuri saba sita nne moja sita sita sifuri sita sita. Na ujipatie bima ya deleva kipato. Umahili wa deleva hawishi tu kwenye kumundu uskani. Bari pia, umakini wakulinda kipato chake wakato wa majanga kifeza. Bima Pub. Urahisi wa maisha.